the challenge will be to to fit in time. <laughs> okay, who knows me? Uh, this is my <laughs> worst part. I speak so much. I will try to fit on time. I measured exactly the time for for the slide, and this is the challenge today. Okay. Now, uh, this is the. Uh, this is the agenda, okay? Just a, a small intro introduction. Uh, I introduce myself just for two minutes because most of you don't, don't know me. And then a few words about me. The original heating solution at home, okay? The, the winter is coming. <laughs> the cold is here. And, and it was a problem in the past at home. Then uh, you will see how I redesigned the heating system at, at home with Arduino, with Python, <laughs> and then I will spend the, the most time with, with the redesigned redesign solution and with the software solution. Uh, of course, last winter it was working, but with a bad interface, and this is a problem for our wives <laughs> or our partners. And then this year we have a, a user interface. <laughs> uh, Vertical user interface for that problem. And then just ideas, planned functionalities, you know, when you finish something you have a lot of ideas to improve, but the time is another thing. Then, start. This is a summary of myself, but just in numbers. <laughs> okay? Uh, I, I'm a technician, this is obvious. I worked for a long time ago. I'm a blogger for a long time ago too. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur for a long time again. <laughs> uh, and then, nowadays I'm working as an architect most of my time, designing solutions, not implementing <laughs> solutions, but touching, but not as much as I want. No? Uh, I started understanding how important are the software development methodologies five years ago, and I started understanding the challenge are people, not technologies. <laughs> Because when you have an idea, you need teams, and managed teams are more difficult than managed technologies. And then, nowadays, currently, I'm working 20% of my time in a European project called Empowering for energy efficiency in, in European level. And 80% of my time, I'm working as a CTO in an M2M called Factory, in an M2M company, where we develop a framework for M2M. In the next PyCon in Zaragoza, I'm going to spend 10 minutes explaining our framework called Mimetic, developed in m 2 m Cloud Factor. Okay? If you want to know more about me, you have my CV online, you have my LinkedIn here, and the best resource, of course, is the blog, because 14 years writing is not <laughs> is the best definition of myself. Okay, what I bought one day when I, <laughs> when I finished my home. Okay, I bought a common heating system, or not as common, I don't know, you will, you will see. It's a, a common heater with an original electronics, with a proprietary electronics. That electronics uh, talks using power line with a central point, with a, a point installed in metal case. With a, I describe as a, as a proprietary gateway, because connects the power line data to a wireless data to a common remote controller for your uh, heating system. The problems, the original electronic phase. Every two, three years, one heater stops working. Why? The, the PCB fails, the I don't know what is burned, a lot, a lot of problems every year in the worst moment. <laughs> then I have to solve that because the arguments at home <laughs> are, are usual. Then, uh, another problem, unknown state. I don't really know what happened. No? The heater is on or the heater is off? Because I only can set the, the desired temperature. But now, why is it stopped? I'm cold. I, I went on. What happened here? I can't distinguish that. And then, no desired behavior because of that. No? I'm cold 
and the heater is off and the desired temperature is the maximum, what happened here? No? Photos of the original system. This is the electronics of the heater. Of course, the cover is, is get off. <laughs> okay? But here is the, the original electronics, the, the central point, the gateway, okay? and the common remote controller for your system. Okay? Now, the chart. <laughs> okay? Here, the heater with the pan stamp solution. What is the pan stamp? We will see in a few minutes. For a while, it's an Arduino solution. Okay? It's a smaller, with radio, with some advantages, but at the end, it's an Arduino solution. We are going to use 800 or 900 frequencies for communicating with the, with the server using not an IP protocol, okay? A swap network. But this is SAP network. This is new, okay? I will spend some time explaining that. I couldn't spend an hour just talking about swap network. It's a very, very simple network. Forget pings, forget IPs, forget connected oriented connections, forget whatever you know is another story, okay? We will see later. Those and then frequencies for 2G cellular networks. Excuse me? Those are frequencies for cellular networks. 2G. Uh, for uh, G. industrial uh, solutions, you can use that. Not hey, we'll just have interference. No, 868 is a free frequency. You yeah. can use it everywhere. 915, though, I think it's in uh, yeah. 868 is free for yeah. sure. Yeah. For one. industrial solutions, you can use that. Not, not for. You can think. You have to think. Uh, this is not a, a, a wide band solution. Okay, you use a few bits. Yeah, we okay. get interfered, but, but yes, but the range the, is another. It's it's permitted. Okay, it's selling in Spain. The company is a Spanish company. Okay. Uh, then the server. Of course, I need another pan stand to receive the signal. Pan stick is just an adapter to connect the, the USB connection of your computer, and. This, year, this is a very simplified graphic about the solution. Next, we will see the detailed graphic, okay? Just for understanding. This is the idea. Now, with the server, now we have a web responsive, a mobile application, and an APA to connect to the system. It's a REST APA, and the user can manage the heating solution using this APA. Then, what is a pan -stam? okay? pan is is a sum. It's a sum of a common Arduino, plus a Texas Instrument CC1101 radio. <laughs> okay, this is the model. Okay, this model, you can buy this model in Spain, in France, in Germany, in the US, wherever you want, and it's permitted the use. Okay, I don't know why, I'm not a, <laughs> a legislator. Okay, but it's used. And then, if you mix both of them, you have this small chip. This chip, the real size is something like that. About 2.5 centimeters per one centimeter. So it's really small. Okay? I want to draw some chips today, but I forget it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay? It was a very busy day today, but I want to, to, to bring some electronics because it's interesting to see. Okay? You, you will see the, the CPU is a common Arduino CPU or less, powerf less powerful. 8 megahertz, 2 kilobytes of RAM, really small. Okay? The consumption is very interesting. This is the input, okay? And the radio of the sectors, the, set, the Texas instrument radio. Okay? Then, the mounted solution. Okay? This is the heater with my electronics. <laughs> okay? This is real. Okay? This is not a simulation, this is not a test. It worked last week. With a cover. <laughs> okay. uh, is happy with that? <laughs> your, your wife is happy with that? Yeah, because it has a cover. <laughs> it's a cover, but if I put a cover, you don't see anything. <laughs> okay? Then in the next slide, we will see all the parts in detail. Okay? The parts is a. Anybody knows what is a Facebook PCU? Recognize this PCU? It's my mobile PCU. <laughs> okay? It's a, and separate my mobile PC. <laughs> okay. I cut and I put inside the okay, the common PC use that you receive when you buy a phone, it's exactly that. Nothing else. <laughs> okay. Cheaper more cheaper impost. Uh, a custom PCB, this is difficult to get that. 
Okay? In that case, I have to give thanks to Daniel Berenguer, the owner of Panastan, the company Panastan. He's in Extremadura. And he, he did this a small PCB for me. You can see here, heater control board 0 0.1. <laughs> okay? You connect the pan stamp here in that socket with a small reset button and this interface for connecting the solid state relay which controls the power on or power off the, of the heater, the temperature sensor is a, is a common TMP36. That in Barcelona costs 35 euros, just one. If you buy that in the extreme, okay, China, 4.5 dollars. <laughs> okay, then you can compare. <laughs> okay, the most important reason for using SSR and not a common relay is because of the noise. Okay, imagine stay at home, click, 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 click. <laughs> okay, there is something more quiet. Okay, then the temperature sensor sensor cost. 60 cents. This PCB costs around 10 euros. Okay. The pan stamp costs 15 dollars. Really cheap everything. PCB cost, I don't know, <laughs> by a phone <laughs> in real life. Okay, it's really cheap solution. And then, <coughs> in the other side, it was in the heater, now in the server. Forget that part for, for a moment. This is a real part. This is the needed part for our school. For our solution, we only need a raspberry, a pan stick, and the pan stand. Nothing else. Okay? <coughs> $35, dollars $20 for pan stick, $15 for pan stand, uh, $5 for antenna. Cheap. No? But this is my real solution. <laughs> because I control more things at home. Okay? Have to give thanks to Rick, who helps me a lot. <laughs> okay? But uh, this is the real one of the central controls of at home. We have more than one. <laughs> okay, but this is this controls the doors, this controls a lot of things at home. Okay? That's the idea. But you can see there the pan stick, the pan stamp, the antenna, and the raspberry. Okay, it's exactly the same, but with more things. More parts. Okay, then uh, Oops, I missed something. Here. This is <laughs> this is the purpose of this, this talk today. Okay, I talk about the heater. Of course, I had to, to develop the firmware using Arduino. And on Arduino, you have the source code uh, linked later. Okay, you can see the source code of my heaters <laughs> if you want. It's very simple source code. And here is what is the evolution of this system. This is not a standard uh, implementation of Panastan. We evolved the source code. It was the same graph as before, but with, but with more details and more real. Okay, the Raspberry has a Lagarto Swap. Lagarto Swap is a piece of software developed using Python uh, that works as a gateway between a swap network and an HTTP API and a web interface. Okay? That HTTP API, it's common. If you say post, blah, 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 or get, blah, 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 you change or you set something to the network or you get something to the network. Why so simple? Because, because of the swap network. I told before this is not an IP network. How it works simplified in a simplified explanation. In a swap network, you only define variables here and variables there. Okay? You say, this is an input variable and this is an output variable. If this is an input variable, you only can read this variable okay? from the point of view of the server. Always. Okay? Then you, when you read that variable, okay, you know, for example, what is the temperature in the room, for example. Okay? Or if the heater is on or if the heater is off. Okay? In the other way, if you want to set something, for example, desired temperature, you set a output variable, and it, this variable appears basically here. <laughs> okay? The problem is uh, you don't have, it's not reliable. It can disappear in the middle. Okay? This is the challenge. You have to solve that challenge 
in any way with your imagination. <laughs> okay, because the protocol is really simple, it's very light, it's, okay? And you have to control interferences, you have to control communication problems, whatever. The idea then. So one second, so if the communication drops, what happens? The heater you have to working. control that. No, but retrying, you don't know. But that. if you don't retrieve, the heater just stops working or just no, 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 is no. non control? No, no, no. It's more it's simpler. The heater has, knows how, how to work alone without the server. Okay? The server only monitors and sets uh, profiles or settings in, in specific moments. If you want to know if you are set this variable, it's just a timeout a time problem. Okay? Because if you set and uh, an input variable don't change, then you can say, I have to reset and reset and reset until we get the, the result. How many times? Is your decision. <laughs> no? it, it isn't a problem, really, at home. Okay. I developed professional solutions. For example, I developed greenhouses in, in Chile using this technology and developing all hardware at home. Then it's, a, it's a prototype, of course, but it works today. It's working <laughs> okay. with some sen several sensors. Okay, and it's working very good, just with everything working with the swap network. Okay, because the consumption is really low have some advantages, and the price is one of them, of course. <laughs> no? And then, we are talking about uh, Lagarto. The original Lagarto does that, an HTTP interface and a web interface, but it's a general web interface for swap network. It, it doesn't talk about heaters, it doesn't talk about temperatures, it doesn't talk about anything. It's a general interface. We will see in the next slide. But what we did with that, we extended Lagarto swap because we want a system oriented to events, not a pool, a pool based uh, system. No? I don't want to, to ask again and again and again, what is the temperature, what is the temperature, what is the state, what is the state? Okay, maybe this is the swap network, but in the IP network I don't want to make a pooling questions. I want an uh, event oriented solution and we choose MQTT. If you don't know uh, that pre protocol, I recommend to spend some minutes uh, understanding the protocol because it's really useful. It's a it's a simplified version of AMQP. Maybe you know RabbitMQ. Okay, this is a really s simple solution with very similar ideas, but oriented to end to end. Okay, for embedded devices and things like that. Then, in the Raspberry Pi, we we'll have that part, and with that part, we can talk with a banana pi. The one knows what is a banana pi? No? <laughs> yes? Okay, it's an evolution of Raspberry Pi, cheaper and powerful. Ten times powerful, maybe, or more, <laughs> than banana pi, and ten dollars less. And who make that? Excuse me? Who make that? Uh, you? No, who make that? Who ah, it? it's a Chinese thing. company. Okay. You can go to the extreme, for example, and buy it for you. Or AliExpress. Or if you don't find, if you can't find it, send me an email and I give you the, the contact of the seller, okay. the sales guy. You give a good experience with it, or? Yes, yes, yes. No, it's really cheap. <coughs> the size is, the form factor is the same. And everything is. If you take a look, at it, oh, it's exactly the same. But the processor is not a, it's not the same. <laughs> okay, the characteristics are better, and the price is ten dollars cheaper. Good deal. <laughs> no. Then, with Banana Pi, we run an Open Hub server. Open Hub server is developed using Java. Okay? But uh, it's a really interesting software because it works like a bus. And that bus is an events oriented bus, and you can trigger events or, or, or manage commands um, from different sources. For example, from the web interface, from an API, from a mobile application, <coughs> from a, a time event from a Google Calendar, from a, whenever you want, okay? from a physical device, whatever you want. And you can make simple scripts managing these logics. Okay? It's really interesting. If you want to do something about robotics, uh, excuse me, domotics, okay? at home, I recommend that for playing. Because you are a programmer. Okay? <laughs> if you are not a programmer, it's very difficult to manage. Okay? But for programmers, it's the best, in my opinion. Then, this is the real scenario with the tails, 
Okay. Um, and now, is that once? No once. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the standard web page of Panestan. Last winter, <laughs> we used that interface for setting our our uh, heaters at home. <laughs> and my wife has <laughs> a little bit angry. <laughs> but it, I want I need a test. I need to spend one winter knowing if, if it works or not, because you know everything is time and it's interesting to know if you have to fix or you have to evolve. No? In this sense, uh, just to evolve in the explanation about swap network, this, this is an endpoint identifier of a, a swap network. You can say, ah, oh, this is close to an IP. No, <laughs> nothing to see. To see. The, the device is the number 10, then the device ID is just the 10. Okay? The 11 means the variable. Okay? This is the 11 variable that you share. <laughs> okay? And the zero is the position in, inside the variable that you want to read. Counting in bits or counting in bytes, I can't remember now. Okay? You say, in that variable at the position zero, I can read eight bits for knowing how is the battery of that point. In this case, this is not a heater, of course, okay? But I don't have a, a, <laughs> a screenshot of that. But in this case, I, you can see it's the same variable, but at different point of the variable, I have the temperature and the humidity. Okay? Then it's another point of view of the communication. Uh, anybody knows what is a packet radio? No? AX25 protocol? Yeah? Thank you. <laughs> okay? Uh, packet radio, before Infovia, before modems in Spain, there are people like me <laughs> who connect to internet using meters and meters of antennas of our home. Then we use that protocol. AX25. Uh, it's uh, an evolution of AX25, used for a lot of cashiers, no? for ATMs. But why I talk about that? Because if you have the opportunity to see that, it's really interesting. Because uh, in Wi Fi networks, it's really difficult to know what's happening in the air. No? The monitor uh, state or the monitor uh, mode is not always permitted and the information is coded and it's difficult to see. But when you use that kind of technology, you can see what's happening in the air. Okay, what, what's moving, what packets are flowing there. And with this protocol, you can know that. It's really interesting to see these kind of things because you are used to be very far from the reality. And these kind of experiences are interesting. And this is the real interface <coughs> today. If you are interested, then we can see my mobile phone with this interface changing things at home. You can see this is the, the, the heating pad, and in this case, you can see the blinds here. Okay? Everything is, and this is the table, tablet uh, view, and the mobile view, but it's exactly the same responsive interface. And then, planet functionalities. Just with that, okay? Just with that. Uh, without adding anything else. I can manage my uh, heating system using Google Calendar. I can create a channel. I can define, for example, my kitchen temperatures for this week. And automatically, it's, uh, get, uh, it, that information goes to the open hub and sets that information to the system with a few lines of a scripting. Okay? permitted for open hub. This is the, the interesting part of the open hub. Then you can have statistics of power consumption, statistics about outside temperatures, inside temperatures, your settings with these temperatures. Okay? With that information you can predict what you want. You can say the system. If outside temperature is three degrees and the last time you have this uh, temperature you set your heaters to 23, then please ask me if I want to set my heaters to 23. Okay. This is really simple to do this kind of thing. And, and then, on tracks, anybody knows what is on tracks? Huh? On tracks is, a, is a, an application for your mobile that uh, tracks your uh, position, your geo position, 
and sends that information to your MQTT server. And then you can track yourself to your own servers, okay? And you can tell the system to set things or to suggest things because of your position or your tendency. You are going out or you are coming back. Okay, you say, suggest me if I have to adjust temperature when I'm coming back. Do you know the idea? Yeah? And then it could be possibilities in cross field. And here there are the references. Uh, <coughs> the first link you have the, the, the entries in my blog with description of that system. And in the second part, you have the firmware and the evolved Lagarto swap version with Python. Okay? And you have questions, doubts, or anything? My well, question is about that swap network. Mm, I guess they don't have any kind of security on who is able to set or read by or No, you can encrypt the, the network if you want. It's a symmetric encryption. Uh, <laughs> okay? 